Hey guys and welcome to Rocky's one year progress video. So Rocky is an off the track thoroughbred. He was trained but never quite made it to the to a race. He was six when I got him and he had just been spelled for a year. So when I got him in September of 2021, we just did a lot of groundwork, a lot of lunging. As you can see, he was very much in what we'll say paddock condition. He was very chunky. So we just took a lot of time on the ground, just getting his fitness up, getting his strength up. One thing for him, he was always so quiet on the ground. But when I was on him, as you can see, it was sometimes a different story. So he was pretty good on the flat, but when he saw poles, he was terrified. Um, and this is a bit of his go-to move where he would just r try and run away from things. Um, you know, not really out of badness, just out of pure, oh my God, I have no idea what's going on. But as you can see, he does, you know, settle down. He nice. tries his hardest, but this is going to be a bit of a theme as we go on um, that he really um, ha gives some big reactions sometimes to things um, at the very start before he knew what was going on um, and he would take um, a bit of time to settle down and understand what was going on. So this is another couple of weeks later again. He did lots of pulls between the last clip and today and then this was his very first jump. As you can see, slightly underwhelming, poor thing. So he's always found the canter quite difficult, but in this clip, um, the arena is very, very deep, very wet. So that's where you can see he's really quite struggling. Um, you know, it's almost like a bog there. He's trying to climb out of the mud, but we just come around and just trying to take it quite easy. And he just doesn't really want to get up in the air. It's like he's trying to get across the fence without actually going into the air, um, which was an interesting technique. I think he just really, really didn't understand so he is a horse that was raced on the flat, um, not over jumps. So he really just had never done it before. He really didn't understand. Um, he was just trying to figure everything out. And there was definitely some moments where um, my life kind of flashed before my eyes and he was kind of galloping off. And I was like, oh my God, am I going to be able to stop it before I get to the end of this arena? Um, but he was, he was good. He just really didn't understand what was going on. I think this was the last one we did and it was, you know, not too bad that one. So left him at that. So this is again a week or two later. Um, so there was a lesson happening at an arena near me. So I said, yeah, I'll bring him to the lesson, even though, you know, we don't have a lot of experience. Um, it was more just to get the experience of being away from home, being around other horses, see what he's like. And as you can see, he was very, very excited. And I thought I was going to run over this small child. Um, <laughs> honestly, if I was these kids' parents, I would have been, you know, cursing me out of it, being like, who is this girl on this crazy thoroughbred, nearly killing our children? Um, but anyway, I didn't. I managed to not run over any children, which was quite nice. Um, but he was just so excited. He just wanted to run around as fast as he could and run away from things and... Yeah, he really was very, very excited. Um, this is also around the time that whenever I posted clips of Rocky on social media, everyone kept saying, you're, you know, you're holding him too much. You're using too much rain. Like, just let him go. Like, thoroughbreds um, go faster when you put contact on their mouth. Guys, that is just not the case for Rocky. If I loosen my reins, he literally would bolt. He would just go faster and faster and faster and faster until he was in a blind gallop um, because I did try it. I did try and just lo loosen my rein and see if he would slow down himself and he did not. And yeah, it was like borderline dangerous. So please stop telling people to not use rein on their thoroughbred because um, it's just not safe. So yes, as you can see, a lot of fighting, a lot of, oh my God, I just want to gallop around. I was trying to reassure him. I was trying to get him to settle. Um, and he does, you know what? He slowly does improve. Here he is going over some pulls, very sensible. Um, of the jump, again, just wanting to get over that as quickly as possible. Um, and the same there. At least he's jumping a little bit into the air, but it's almost as if when he jumps into the air, he gives himself a fright. He's a bit like, oh, I don't, I don't really like the feeling of that. It's a bit strange. Um, but yeah, I guess he's just really literally never jumped before, which is really interesting because 
As you guys know, I ride show jumpers, but all really the show jumpers I've ever ridden, even the young horses, you know, they'll always have done a loose jump when they're before they get broken. So they always have the idea in their head. They understand the concept of jumping, whereas Rocky just, you know, he's six years old and he's probably never jumped into the air in his life. So it was really interesting. Here he is with some fillers and you can see the, the Rocky move of, oh, I'm just going to run away from this. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. So I try not to let him go past it. We just turn back and um, yeah, he's generally good in that. He'll give a big, big spook, but once you just slow down and he can see it for the second time, he's usually okay. And then that one he'd never jumped before, but because he'd, you know, jumped the last one and was, oh, wasn't actually that bad. Then he went on to jump the second one, which was good. Like it shows a good brain. Um, it's more just he would go into a bit of a panic, bless him, and um, wouldn't, yeah, he just uh, needed a lot of time to think about things and he wouldn't give himself the time because he would try to rush. So it was, a, yeah, it was an interesting, interesting time. So then this is another week later. So we go to the that same arena again, but this time it's not a lesson. It's just an arena higher. So there's no other horses here. So as you can see, he's a lot more relaxed in the trot. Um, he still is fighting me a bit and he still does want to run around a little bit, but he's definitely a lot calmer. Um, it's his second time out now. So he kind of knows a bit what he's doing. We've been doing a lot more pull work at home and even a little bit of jumping, I think. So again, he's just getting that experience and just trying to learn all the time. So here we are trotting over some poles. But as you can see, every time he sees a new pole, it's like, oh my gosh, what's that? What is that? He was very, very worried about these poles, even though I would, lun every time I lunged him, he would lunge over poles. Every time I rode him, we'd walk over poles. Like I did, he saw poles every single day and every single day he would come out and be like, oh, I'm not sure about this, guys. <laughs> so I'm sure you can imagine at this time, um, my hopes and dreams for him to be, you know, a lovely sh show jumping horse were, you know, they were a little bit, um, <laughs> I was a little bit unsure, but we said, no, we'll give him the time. Maybe it just means he's going to be careful, you know? Um, but as you can see, still a lot of running away, running off, especially when he had the open space in front of him there. Now, this is our cantering situation. Our cantering situation was very bad. <laughs> um, we, most thoroughbreds off the track will have uh, one stronger lead than the other. Rocky would canter on the right lead and would not canter on the left lead. This is us trying to get the left lead and he gets it. And then, well, I try and get off his back to reward him, but then he just speeds up. So then I have to, you know, keep holding him. And yeah, it's, it's a difficult situation. Like I really want to, you know, reward him and give him a pat. But as you can see there, I gave my reins for a second just to fix them. And he just went straight away like the minute you loosen your reins he will just run so I'm very big into like um take and release the pressure but the problem was every time I released the pressure he would just bolt so it was a little bit of a tricky situation because I could never really teach him that I wanted him to go slow because I could never really reward him without him bolting so it just took a lot of time and a lot of circles because on the circles he was a lot better I would was able to keep the bend and he would relax a bit um so here we are cantering over these canter poles and now over a little jump as you can see really not sure about that i'm actually not sure why he kept drifting to the left jumping to the left um over this there as you can see legs everywhere wasn't really sure what to do with them but then you know came around a little bit better the second time still a lot of running off after the fence and not really being able to control him there Still spooking to the left for some reason. Uh, there he tried, so that was good. And then we just do it once more. Um, as you can see, I must have just given up on trying to counter on the left lead. Uh, that wasn't too bad. Just, you know, not figuring out his legs. So then we go on to the cross country. Oh, yeah, classic, just running away, running away. Oh my gosh, what is that? Um, but then... Came, comes around the second time and jumps it with no problem at all now the water so this was his first time going into water and it took quite a while to get him in I didn't have another horse here to give him a lead unfortunately so it was just a matter of 
keeping his nose pointed towards the water and releasing the pressure every time he went towards it. And then as you can see, once he went in, huge pats, big reward. He kind of goes, oh, that actually wasn't that bad. And then he went into the water every time after that. So <laughs> he really is a funny dude. Again with this, oh, big reaction. And then, oh, actually, no, that's fine. So he kind of tends to do these very big kind of, oh my God, big reaction. But then it's so fine once he just thinks about it and realizes, oh, it's not going to kill me. So then we jump over some logs, some just very, very tiny fences. It's just more about exposure than anything else. We jump this one, which is honestly, yeah, kind of big enough for his first time cross country, but uh, he was good. And then we come down these steps, which he was excellent at the steps. He was really, really good. So all in all, big learning day, but um, definitely gave me a lot to think about and a good insight into his, um, kind of just his mind and his behaviour. It's quite interesting to see how they cope with different things. So this is another day at home. This is kind of an update on our canter situation. So this is our left lead canter. So we now can get the left lead canter, which is good. You know, we can consistently get it. It just took a lot of time, a bit of cantering on the lunge, just, you know, rep repetition, repetition, just keep asking him until he would get it and then he would get a big reward um, and then we'd trot and walk. But the only problem with our canter at the moment, at this moment, is that we could only canter on a circle. If we went around the outside of the arena, he would just kind of take off and I would have no control and we'd kind of run into the fence, which wasn't very nice. Um, so we really had to stay on the stay on the circle in order to keep the relaxation because we were able to keep the in, little inside bend and then that really helped. But as you can see, it was still very, still quite hairy, still a lot of fighting. Um, he, yeah, he, he really kind of fell in on the right lead. So then I would ask him to, you know, um, come out on the circle and then he would get stressed and then he would get faster and then he'd fall in more. It was a bit of a vicious cycle, but Again, it was just doing it in really small amounts, just, you know, doing a couple of circles until he was semi-relaxed and then trot, walk and reward. So here we are doing a little bit of jumping again. So I just kind of show him the fences before I jump them because he is still that tendency of if something changes, he might just run away from it instead of jump over it. Um, and we're also doing a lot of trotting to fences. So that was quite good. We're starting to see maybe a hint of what's to come in that he will actually jump into the air now as opposed to just running through it. But then we canter and he's a lot flatter and um you know he's always a lot he was always a lot better when we trotted to fences because he was able to give himself a lot more time to really think about things. So this was our first uh, double um you can see kind of jumped the first one, then went, oh my god, a second fence? I've never done that before. Oh, that's interesting. So we kind of, you know, countered this again, just very kind of flat jump, not really jumping up in the air, just trying to figure out where his feet are. Now he's starting to get the double, which was quite a good one there. I was very happy with that. So then we come around to this. Um, oh no, sorry, we just do a circle. Never mind. Just to get that rideability after the fence, you can see he's not rushing quite as much. And um, we did used to do a lot of like circles or a lot of like trot and then walk before the end of the arena, just to get him thinking that when he jumps, he doesn't just gallop away; he actually slows down. So now this is just a single fence, just with some V poles, just to see if I could help his technique a little bit. And I have to say, he's a lot more relaxed here. He's you know cantering away quite you know, softly, he's not really trying to gallop off on me, he's listening to me. So this was quite good progress. And this was all in preparation for our very first show, which is the next clip after this, and it is a show jumping show at Shepparton. So this is Rocky in the warm-up. Um, it was nice to be able to ride and jump in a bit of a bigger arena with um, a bit of a better surface and more space, but it did mean that he was very, very excited, and especially with the other horses around. He was really, um, uh, a few moments where he was a little bit difficult, but he was jumping quite well and, you know, reasonably relaxed, just, you know, as you can see, really, really fighting with me. Um, he was good when he gets to the jump, but a lot of fighting. So he only entered like the 60 centimeter. We actually entered the 60 and the 70, but we ended up doing the 60 centimeter twice because 
This is actually my second round. But on the first round, I think he knocked about every single fence. So, <laughs> um, it was his first time also riding on grass. And as you can see, he's just very, very excited. I really don't have a lot of control. Um, that was, yeah, I really, really was like, oh, God, am I going to be able to stop here? Then I bring him back to the trot. Then we pop over a fence. And I'm just trying to keep him as slow as possible. And keep just the energy levels down and keep things really nice and relaxed. I'm talking to him the whole time. Um, this was a double that he was a bit like, oh my god, a double, even though you have done that at home, Rocky, you know what they are. But you know what, even though he knocked about every fence um, and it was a bit wild, well, actually, I don't know what the positive is. I mean, he got better as went as the round went along, I suppose. He, um, yeah, he knocked like all of the first few there, and then, you know, he slowly got a little bit better, and you know, he didn't do anything absolutely wild. He also jumped everything. He didn't stop at anything, which was very good. Um, you know, he he was a lot braver and jumping everything. So yeah, you know what? You have to take your wins when you get them. Um, it was our first show, so you can't expect miracles. And it was just all about again exposure. And just introducing him to other, you know, um, new facilities with other horses around. One thing about Australia, um, well, one thing about where I live in Australia is that there's nowhere to go schooling with show jumping. So in Ireland, you can hire like any arena and they'll have a show jumping course up probably. And you can jump around that as many times as you like. And it's so beneficial for the young horses. Whereas in Australia, I can't find anywhere near me like that, which is such a, such a pity. So it means you actually have to go to a show to get the experience. And the show is in the best environment for learning. But anyway, this is our next show, which is a combined training. As you can see, we did our lovely dressage test. The trot work was very nice. The counter work was a bit mental, but I don't have any more clips than that, unfortunately. Then this is the uh, show jumping phase of it. Um, That warm jump was a bit average but then he was good there again I'm just doing a lot of trotting to fences but as you can see this jump was actually really good and when he lands he's actually quite relaxed so this is our show jumping round and I think you can see a big improvement from the previous round at Shepparton to this round like he's definitely a lot more well, he's not fighting me so much. He is listening to me a lot better, especially when I ask him to slow down there. He's making a bit of a better jump. See there, you know, he's like, I feel like he's very much, um, he's listening to me a lot better. Well, except there. But, you know, overall, um, it's definitely a much smoother round. We don't knock half as many pulls, which is always a good, a good start. Um, we do knock this pull, but it's actually totally my fault. He just kind of takes off and I just get a little bit left behind and then he just catches it behind, but you know, not too bad. There's a little bit of a wild moment there and he gets a little bit long and strung out. Then he comes back to me. This double is a little bit dodgy. Um, it does take him a while to get the doubles kind of understand them. Even though we do a lot at home, it's just when he ever does a double, he'll either, knock the first part because he's looking at the second part or he'll jump the first part really well and then forget about the second part. He just finds it hard to think of everything at once, which is fair. He's a man. He can only do one thing at once, eh? No, sorry, that was a bit sexist. <laughs> but anyway, very pleased. I think we might have placed in this um, and he was a very good boy and look how cute he is with his plaits. Very happy. So now we're into December and we start doing a little bit more difficult jumping at home. So this is his first time doing bounces, very good boy, trying to just help him make a better shape, a better technique over the jumps. So we do some grid work also. The common denominator here is that we can only really trot to fences. So there's a lot of trotting to grids, but look at that jump. That was a good one. So there was some exciting moments where he, you know, he showed that oh, maybe he maybe he can jump. Um, it could be quite exciting. And here we are doing some flat work. As you can see, our canter is much improved. We can actually come around the outside of the arena now. <laughs> um, and he's a lot more relaxed when we canter over some poles and that. So I feel like he was going really well um, by December of 2021. 
And then after this, he goes on a little break for a week or two because I just, you know, was going away for New Year's and then I had COVID actually. So like a lot was going on. So he went out for a little bit of time, um, which I thought was going to be good for him because often, you know, when you horses learned a lot, um, they take some time, you put them out and then they take the time to digest it and then they come back even better. But I will say with Rocky, that was unfortunately not really the case. This is him in January, and I don't know what I don't know why, but when I brought him back into work, he was so tense. Like even this trot isn't half as good. He's really shuffling along because every time I loosen the reins, he tries to run off, and our canter isn't so good anymore, and our jumping. Oh, you're gonna see the jumping in a minute. It's a bit of a disaster. Um, yeah, also around this time, two people came to try him because he actually was for sale. And I think that really, really wound him up because although he was very good for me in December, then when someone else got on him, he became very, very tense. Um, I do think that actually had an effect on him. But, um, anyway, I feel like it's just a good example of how progress with young horses or, you know, off the tracks is so not linear you have your ups and downs all the time, like, you know, it's never going to be always improving, 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 you're always going to have moments where, oh no, what have I done, oh god, we're going downhill again, why, what's going on, like, you can see this canter is very, you know, four-beat canter, he's just kind of going sideways, Um, he's very excited, he's actually never looked more like a thoroughbred than in this clip, I think, so, yeah, it was a little bit disappointing, a little bit frustrating, um, because I kind of, you know, brought him back after his break going, oh, this is it now, it's going to be brilliant, um, you know, he's been going so well, he's had the break, he's going to come back better than ever, and he just really didn't, he was really tense and really, really worried, and I felt like we'd gone back to um, where we started. So this is our first jump back um, after his break, and honestly, this is not a nice video to watch. Um, but I think it's just important to show you how bad he was like he I thought we were going to run through that fence and I just had to lie back and stop him like it's really not nice to do and I really don't like to do it but I really thought he was just going to run through that fence so it, it was just more safety than anything else so then I do this um kind of almost like a grid to try and help him slow down and you know try and just get a bit more control but it really doesn't really work and we're very much struggling to stop so you do some bounces and this does help before his break he had always been very good with the bounces and it really helps to slow him down so we did that and as you can see there was a big difference there after the jump um he was really understanding it and even this last time he comes around although he does knock it I don't really care so then at the end of February we head out to a freshman show jumping day and it also just isn't so good um as you can see he's really running off of me he's not like that calm rocky i had in the you know in the combined training show um you know a couple of months prior he's really running off on me i'm struggling to keep the control um and he's just kind of you know racing through doubles again not really looking at where he's going um so yeah it was definitely felt like we'd gone quite backwards um we kind of entered I entered this competition you know on the basis that he was going as he was before his break um so I entered a bit of a bigger class but that wasn't really the right decision um you know he he didn't have the right ability for it um and he was you know knocking quite a few of the jumps and just wasn't a really inappropriate height but I just didn't realize he had kind of gone backwards so much um, we then went to one more show before I went home to Ireland and this time we entered a super small height. It was like, um, 60 centimeters or something like that. I think it was like the grade five, which is one of the, I think it's, yeah, I think the, it's one of the lowest grades in combined training anyway. So we did our dressage test. It was just a walk trot test again, just wanted him get back the confidence, get back the relaxation and even a walk trot test was still you know he's still fighting me and where our or where our trot was always so consistent and usually quite nice he was quite tense so it was definitely the right decision to go back um to basics and just get his get his relaxation back again 
because he had really, you know, lost it when he went on his break. Um, which is, as I said, normal. You're always going to have ups and downs. Um, and it's just about, you know, reflecting and thinking, what do I need to do now? Um, I need to take a few steps back, work on the basics again, and then come back to the level that we were at. So this is our warm up for show jumping. And to be fair, not too bad. A little bit of a swishing tail and thinking about having a little run, but he was staying quite relaxed, even with all the horses around him. So, you know, we're, we're getting those small improvements back again. This is his show jumping round. I had to trot around it. The arena was quite tight and the course quite windy and he was just fighting me a little bit. So we just trotted around as much as we could and tried to keep him as relaxed as possible. But there, you know, he's really trying to run off. So I am having to be quite strong, which I don't love, but just isn't necessary um, when he gets excited when he's away from home. So after this show, he goes out on a break for five months, or maybe a bit less, actually, because I go back to Ireland. One of my friends was riding him for a little bit after I left, but then she also went back to England. So then he just went on a break, which... Again, I do think breaks are good, even though he came back from this break a little bit strange, but um, I think it was good. So when I came back, I came back in August 2022. This is from September because the first like month I just hacked him out. We just did the most basic, basic, relaxing, um, hacking on a long rain. He was so good on the trail. So on the trail, he, I was able to walk and trot and canter on a long rein and he was super relaxed. Um, and then when I was in the arena, he would become a lot more tense. So I think he really was just gone a bit, not arena sour, but arena tense, I suppose. So I just spent a lot of time on the trail and then slowly tried to bring that relaxation back into the arena. And as you can see here, look at the difference between this time, our first time off property, of the year compared to the previous year he's like a completely different horse super relaxed able to trot around on a long rein you know really relaxed um and happy and just kind of tipping around so really really pleased with him big difference um and i think all that trail riding really going back to basics really paid off um it was really worthwhile so sometimes you do just have to take quite a few steps backwards um just to get that back again so then we go ahead and do some cross country and again the, the, the difference between this cross country schooling and his first time, like he just goes straight up to those big logs, straight over them, there's no hesitation, this is his first time seeing the water, straight in. Good boy. And not only does he go straight into the water, he also does this huge jump into the water, so, so impressed by him. Um, I feel like this year has definitely been a bit of a breakthrough year, um, um, especially after that, that little um, awkward few weeks that we had in January and February. Um, I think going back to basics really, really paid off because when he came back to jumping, then he's so confident, so brave, popping over everything, like even this, cantering relatively relaxed popping over it and then cantering away lovely and relaxed and not fighting me at all. So I was just over the moon after this day that he was so brave and jumping through this quite tricky combination. And we do it again just because we're having way too much fun and popping over it. And yeah, he was just brilliant. So happy with him. So this is our first show of the year. It is a show jumping show. So it's in Albury and it was a two day show. And I think we did the maybe the 17, 80 the first day and also the second day. I think that's the height we did. Something around that anyway. And he was, yeah, he was quite good. He was quite excited, I have to say. Um, it was his first show back and he was excited to see all the horses. But this was our best round of the weekend. And this was on the second day. On the first day, I trotted him around all the fences and he was quite good, but I was like, well, I talked to Tess who was there with me and I was like, okay, we need to trust him. I need to try cantering around the course because his canter at this point was so much better than it was the previous year and he's a lot more balanced and he was really listening to me. So I said a canter around and it paid off. He was just so good. 
like down this distance, really listening to me. We do come around to this double and it's a little bit dodgy, but um, the rideability the whole way around, he's really listening to me. I actually changed his bit um, into a two ring with a straight rubber mouthpiece and he's been in that since and he's just been so good. Um, even this like a little lead change over the fence, coming around, coming around to this distance now. He jumps the second part really nicely. Um, you know, he does fight a little bit, but not half as much as he was. And even when he's fighting, it's still quite relaxed. It's not like the uh, frantic running that he was doing before. So after this show, I felt very inspired and Tess and I spent most of October going schooling at an arena near, near us and doing lots and lots and lots of grid work. So I felt like I really had the ride ability now with the jumping and the flat work. So it was time to really kind of focus on his technique. So that's why we started doing all this grid work. Um, you can see here, you know, he's really calm into the canter. Um, just popping around, looking really good. I was very, very happy with this canter at this stage. We, you know, it's really established now. We're not stressed about it. Um, but it's just more about the technique and the jump. And I was really happy with this, how he really slowed down, put his nose down, looked at the second part and said, yeah, okay, I get it. Yeah. And took his time and thought about it and really jumped it quite well. This is another day. So we went once a week, basically, for a month. And um, the grids got progressively a little bit more difficult each time. But you can see here how his canter is so improved. Like, it's a lot more relaxed. It's a true three-beat canter now, as opposed to he used to do a bit of a four-beat funny thing uh, when he was stressed. You know, there's still moments where he um, pops his head up, but I'm so not worried about that. I don't care where his head is as long as he is relaxed um, and just, you know, um, somewhat supple and somewhat listening to me. I'm very happy with him. So really happy. So this is kind of an update on the canter. Um, and it's definitely a lot improved from when firstly we couldn't canter on the left lead and then we could only canter on a circle and now we can canter wherever we want. So that's some grid work. Um, again, really good, really listening to me. Um, his first time doing, you know, a grid with three elements um, and he was really quite good, especially with having a vertical at the end. That's definitely quite difficult for him because, um, you know, he finds, he I find he jumps the oxers a lot better. The verticals sometimes he can forget a little bit about. So then this is another one where we have, well, we still have moments, as you can see, where he jumps a little bit long. That's why we often have the um a can a canter pull after the fence to encourage him to jump up and around instead of flat. As you see from that last one, he still has these moments where he um you know a little bit fighting, but actually on this day I forgot to say, um this was a different saddle and he did not like it. And this was the reaction. So this is from the saddle, I will say. So now we come to our most recent competition. This is a combined training event in Kyneton. So this is our dressage. Unfortunately, I don't have a video from the event before this. Um, it was an event and he did his best dressage test he's ever done. But the video, my phone was full of memory. So <laughs> I didn't get a video of it. It was so sad because it was literally his best dressage test he's ever done. But anyway... This is a different dressage test, but still, you know, like the difference is huge. We could never really counter a dressage test. It was always very, very wild. And this is just so relaxed. And this is even some ex or lengthened trot. And we got like a 7.5 or something for this saying like, you know, very clear difference shown. I was so pleased because that was something I never thought would ever come. Um, because he was also tense, he just wanted to canter if I asked him for more instead of lengthen. And look at this, this is probably the best halt he's ever done. This was actually something that I taught him on the trail. Um, I would say whoa and then ask him to halt. And he, at first, he would jump around and dance and didn't want to halt. And then he really learned how to do it. And now every time I just say whoa under my breath... He just halts. Then this is the show jumping from this day. And this is definitely his best show jumping round to date. So pleased with him. He was so careful. 
he jumped really, really well, really big. Um, there were some moments where the ride ability wasn't 100%, but oh my gosh, I can't fault the way that he jumped. I was so looking forward to two weeks after this show, I was meant to do a show jumping um, competition, but unfortunately I got COVID and I had to cancel. So that was very unfortunate, but that is our last, this is the, the last show that we've done of the year. We placed fifth and he was a very, very good boy. This is just some fun we've had in December, a bit of loose jumping. Um, he was so much better than I expected. He was really, really good. And then here is me doing some high jumping on him. So that is us jumping 140. Very, very exciting. Um, yeah, he was such a good boy to do that and really, really pleased. But if you watch the Vlogmas episodes, then you have seen these clips. So I will move on. So I just wanted to end the kind of the video with a few clips of me just doing some flat work there last week. Um, he was just being a really good boy, so I thought I'd get a few videos. But really, I just wanted to kind of sum up the experience because obviously this is not a total transformation video. This is just a progress video. We still have so much work to do, so much room for improvement. But I have to say, I feel like this year he's has really been his breakthrough year. I feel like he's really, really come on leaps and bounds, the relaxation's really there, he's really enjoying his work, he's really come on with the show jumping, which I'm really, really pleased about, and I'm really, really excited for another year of Rocky, so my original plan with Rocky was to retrain him and sell him in the six months that I was in Australia, so just, you know, lightly retrain, get him kind of going, and then sell him on. Um, as I said, two people did come to see him, but he was so wound up, but it all worked out for the best because I'm really happy to be keeping him and I'm coming back to Australia for the next two seasons. So I will be keeping him at least until then. And who knows what we will be jumping or competing at by then. And hopefully at that stage, we'll find the perfect new home for him. But until then, um, I'm just going to keep enjoying him and keep having fun. Um, so I hope you enjoy the video and I will see you in the next one. Bye guys.